Hello, my name is Mrs. Mathers. Welcome to AP World History. Uh, this is a really exciting class and um, what I'd like to do in this video today is talk with you a little bit about what we'll be studying in this course and some of the course expectations. First of all, we will be studying history through multiple lenses. This is really important to keep in mind as you enter this course that we're not just talking about who killed what, where, and when. It's not about wars. It's not about changes of borders. It's about all kinds of things. Yes, of course, political systems are very important. And that is one piece of world history that we'll look at. We'll also look at innovation and technology, you know, going way back to ancient civilizations when something like a pulley was invented or even um, standardized axles for wheels and how innovation and technology has continued and will continue to shape history. We'll look at the environment and how uh, particular environmental factors have impacted the course of history. And this is actually really important. And even as we think of what we're um, dealing with right now in our world, the environment is, is, is an important lens for, by which to view history. Culture will include studying the world's major religions, some of the world's major religious conflicts, and um, uh, other cultural developments at, in art, for example. Economics, we'll look at the economic history of the different regions of the world, and we'll look at social structures and roles as they've developed across the world and between genders and among classes within different societies. The course itself is divided into nine units, AP World History course. Um, we start with a prelude unit, and this unit is about four weeks long where we will sort of set the foundation for the rest of the course. In units one and two, we'll be looking at the global tapestry. In other words, what's going on in different parts of the world. It's sort of like a, a tapestry, like a piece of art. Um, but then all of these places interact and exchange. And, and so that will be unit two. Units three and four have to do with uh, the era 1450 to 1750. A lot happened in this era. So we have land-based empires um, in Afro-Eurasia and also in the Americas. But then we have the transoceanic interconnections, which are going to connect uh, the Eastern and the Western Hemisphere for the first sustained amount of time um, that we know of in history. We know there were short contacts prior to this time period, but now we have sustained connection between um, the hemispheres of the world. In unit five and six, we'll be looking at really important revolutions. Of course, we have the uh, American Revolution, the French Revolution, we've got the Haitian Revolution, um, and then the Industrial Revolution or industrialization was a revolution in and of itself, and we'll be looking at that as well. Unit seven, eight, and nine um, take us into sort of the more modern era from 1900 to the present. And of course, there has been a lot of global conflict. As you know, World War I and II were fought during the first half of the 20th century. In the second half of the 20th century, we have the Cold War and decolonization. And uh, especially in the last 50 years or so, we've had a huge amount of globalization in all of the um, themes of history that we'll be studying. All right, so what can you expect in this class? First of all, you will take notes in this class. This is a college level class. You should expect that you will take notes. We do, will require them to be handwritten. Um, electronics will be stowed and out of sight during class. You may bring them out at times when I give you permission or we're doing an activity online. Otherwise, we will be using handwritten notes. Um, about 30% or exactly 30% of your grade will be formative assessments. Um, these are going to require you to do about 10 to 12 pages of reading per night. Some nights a little bit less. Sometimes you might have an additional reading like a primary source. We have chapter quizzes and then key concepts are assignments that you turn in for each chapter and you will be assessed on those and what those are designed to do is to prepare you for the summative assessments these are going to be 70 percent of your grade so we'll have multiple choice questions based on source material so what that means is we'll take a passage of some type that is in the context of something that we've studied in class and you'll have multiple choice questions that you'll answer uh, related to that source and your knowledge 
We do have written responses. There are three types, something called the short answer question, which just has three parts, and it is just that, a short answer, a long answer, or what's called the long essay question, and then a document-based question. We will scaffold our instruction of these written responses, and there will be six essays for the entire year, uh, just to give you an idea about how many there will be uh, that will be summative. Um, this is a really great opportunity to hone and develop your writing skills, and I find as a teacher that it is one of the most important things that happens in this class. The AP exam is Thursday, May 11th, 2023. I realize my picture obscures that. You can see how much each of the parts of the test are worth on the AP exam. I really, really highly recommend that you take the exam. Um, registration for the exam will be very early this year, and I recommend that everyone um, who takes this course does take the AP exam. And we'll talk more about that in class. Some miscellaneous information, Schoology is your one-stop shop. This is where you're going to find resources, links to presentations and to um, readings and to assignments. Supplies that you need for this class is a dedicated uh, folder for this class for handouts and readings, a spiral notebook or loose leaf paper, your preference for taking notes, and pens. Um, and why do I say pens over pencils? For the AP exam, pens are required. For your written exams in class, you will be required to use a pen. So make sure you get a good uh, quality pen. Uh, you know, BIC is fine, but you know, just a pen, uh, black or blue. All right, tips for success. Focused attention during class. This means all electronics put away. I can tell you from loads and loads of psychological research that um, not only are you distracted by your own technology, your phone or whatever, you, their neighbors around you are also distracted and do more poorly on assessments. So everyone is going to be required to put their phones away during class. And I will remind you if you forget, um, but that is really important. Taking thorough notes is really important. If there are times where things seem to be going too quickly, um, I will be posting PowerPoints online after we do them in class, and you can go back and fill in anything that you missed. And of course, if I'm going too quickly, you can just let me know. Reading your textbook is critical to success in this class. Now, the prelude unit is very short, so you won't get a lot of reading in that first unit, but we are getting a brand new textbook this year, and um, it is designed specifically to align with the AP course standards. I had a student um, a few years ago, I had her as a sophomore in AP World, and then I had her as an AP Psych student. She goes, Mrs. Mathers, I figured out how to be successful in all of my classes. I was like, what did you figure out? And she said that I need to read my textbook. So it is, it is really important actually. You can read the textbook pages that we're gonna cover before or after that day's lesson, but it is really important. I mean, I'm sort of overdoing it here, but this is how important it is to me that you read your textbook. It really will make a difference and it will put everything together for you. Um, so the other thing is ask questions, ask questions, always be asking your questions, whether they're to me, another student, or just to yourself. I wonder, I wonder is a great question to ask. I wonder why um, the French felt like they needed to revolt against King Louis and Marie Antoinette. I wonder why women's social roles were, are, were more equal, equal in Africa than in other continents of the world. Um, these questions are going to really spark your curiosity and give you a broader understanding of the course. I would love for you to visit during office hours. If there's something that we've done in class that you don't understand, or you don't understand the significance of it, um, I'll have my office hours posted on Schoology. Please come and visit. I love it, and I love to talk about history. Um, I, I will um, 
talk about my classroom pet when I see you in class. And um, for now, I'll say goodbye. Um, I will see you in class and I look forward to the opportunity to getting to know you. Thanks for your time. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.